Uh, hi, my name is Brett Snodgrass with Dr. Social, and I am uh, very grateful to be here today with Dr. Jared Block, hematopathologist at Carolinas Pathology Group, and he will be talking today on leukemia and lymphoma, and we greatly appreciate his participation in this philanthropy event, and the proceeds will be donated to medical research. Good afternoon or morning. I'm not sure when the presentation is. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about basics behind cancer and then also where does leukemia and lymphoma come from? What does it mean? So, first let's start with what is a cell. The reason that's important is it's what the entire talk is going to be based on and you need a basic understanding of that. So, the cell is the smallest functional unit of the body. You probably remember if you did basic biology in high school or middle school, you probably stained an onion and you looked under the microscope. There you saw the cells. There were little squares with cell walls. The body's made up of the same thing. They're clear when you look at them under the microscope unless you stain them. When you stain them, then you are able to see the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Down at the bottom, I've got a very simplistic mock-up. The nucleus is where all of your DNA or the genetic material is housed. That gives all the instructions to what's going to happen in the cell, how it's going to turn into certain types of cells, and what it's going to do in its environment. So the nucleus produces these signals from the DNA, and they go into the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a sac. It's contained by a lipid membrane in other words, fats, and that, just like a soap bubble, makes a bubble. So that bubble contains all of the nutrients and the proteins that run the different functions that are in the cell. Okay. Now, I want to start with what's a stem cell. You've probably heard about this in the news. The stem yeah. cell is important because it is the one cell in the body, think of it as an infant cell, and that cell can grow up to be anything, just like a baby can grow up to be a president or an engineer. That is the type of cell that will then grow up into all different kinds of skin, stuff in your gut, um, your teeth, everything. Well, the teeth are actually bone, the type of structure that grows out of cells that are at the base where the root is. Okay, that example is a little obscure, but that's okay. Now, I put an analogy here where think of a stem uh, of a plant and as it grows. May I interrupt you for a second, uh, Dr. Block? Yeah. Um, are you on Are you on the first slide still? I am on the first, second slide. Okay. Uh, it says, what is the cell? Yes. Oh, um, yeah, it's not moving over there, is it? Never mind. Here you go. Oh, thank you, sir. Okay. So the stem cell is the most immature cell in the body, and if you think about the stem of a plant, it will grow up to be any number of things, flowers, leaves, fruit. It all came from the same stem, and that's why we call it a stem cell. It can give rise to any kind of tissue in the body, and that'll be important where we understand it, well, where you'll get an understanding of how cancer develops. Now, what is cancer? All cancers start as normal cells in the body. It doesn't come in from anywhere else. They're normal cells that get damaged over time. Sometimes, if you think about skin cancer or melanoma, mm -hmm. it's radiation from the sun that will give you the damage. Now, it's not the first time it's damaged, but over time, the damage builds up. And it's that damage that will eventually cause the cell to start growing out of control. Some some you can inherit. Other things, because it takes a lot of different insults to the genetic material, they happen over a long period of time, so you're more likely to get cancers when you're older. Mm -hmm. Now, when the damaged cell escapes the body's uh, immune system, it starts to grow uncontrollably. So normally, your body will not attack things that are supposed to be there in your body. Okay. But all the time, your body is undergoing this type of damage. And when a cell gets damaged, 
your body has the ability to recognize that cell and kill it. So this is going on all the time. You're always having cells transform into something that could potentially be bad. Now, if that cell then gets out, uh, gets around the normal body surveillance, mm -hmm. then it can grow uncontrollably. It can form tumors or masses. Same thing, a tumor is just a mass. Mm -hmm. uh, it can go to other places, so that's called metastasis. Sometimes people say that they have liver and brain cancer or uh, colon cancer with liver and brain cancer. What it really is is this colon cancer that is metastasized to the brain or metastasized okay. to the liver. So that's just how it becomes more spread. Okay. All right. So the pathologist is important in this because yes. what we do is we look at the, the tissue that your, your uh, surgeon or your family practitioner takes off. They will take it off. We will look at it under the microscope. And what we do is we're able to look at it and tell what normal structures are. We spend a long time learning what normal is because you can't tell what's abnormal until you know what normal is. Right. And it's actually more of an art than a science because if you think about how you recognize your grandmother at the airport, amongst the thousand people that get out of the uh, airport uh, terminal, you just know. There are all these different things you've spent your life learning where you can recognize something. And all the training that we do, which is quite a long time, is basically building a library in our heads of things we look for. Okay. So in each tissue, a cancer will look different than normal tissue. And we can also do special studies on those cancer cells to tell us what type of cancer it is. Now, is there always one study that you can do? Um, There's a whole bunch of them. Okay. So anytime I look at a cancer, a lot of times the cancer will look somewhat like the tissue it came from, like skin cancer. It will look like a certain type of, of uh, aggregate of cells. Mm -hmm. Those cells a lot of the time, if they are well differentiated, it means that they're close to what they should have been. So they start making things that look like skin. Okay. So I can look at it and tell you this came from the skin. Mm -hmm. Other times, and I don't need to do the studies of that or something like that. Okay. Other times, okay. the cells will not look like much of anything. So I need to look for certain markers on the surface. Since all cells come from a stem cell, even though they don't look like anything, along the way, as they grow up to become something specific, they start to have the DNA tell the cell, okay, you're going to start expressing this on the surface. So they make um, big uh, uh, molecules called proteins, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's what you eat. Those proteins uh, use basic building blocks from the protein you eat, and those mm -hmm. start being expressed on the surface. Because remember I said that it's really dictating that, that the DNA dictates how the cell is going to differentiate and what it's going to do in its environment. So in order to know what it's going to do, mm -hmm. it starts expressing certain proteins on its surface that do things in its environment. Now, are these, uh, are these stem cells that are located in the skin that are giving rise to the skin tumor? There are stem cells that are different everywhere. So the stem cells in the skin are the bottom layer of the skin, and as they grow, they become more mature skin cells. So this, this, at the surface of any um, part of the body, the outer surface is called epithelium, that being outer. So the stuff in your mouth is the same stuff as on your skin. The only difference is that on your skin, once those cells grow up, they also produce a protein called keratin. Okay. And keratin is actually made because it makes things tougher. Because it's on the outside of your body, your body wants to protect itself from a lot of different things. Whereas in your mouth, it's more protected, so it doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, even though they're the same cells, the cell types, it grows up and does something slightly different. Okay. So. What we'll do if we have cells that don't look like much is we can take certain antibodies, which are basically targets. Uh, they're like smart bullets. And mm -hmm. so they will home in on any protein I want. So 
I may look for a combination of five different proteins on the surface. Because if I look at it, I can tell you, well, since it expresses these two but not these three, mm -hmm. that must be skin or it must be um, a lymphocyte. And we'll talk about what that is. But once I know what it is, I can say what kind of cancer it is. I can tell you how it should be. Uh, that tells the doctor how it should be treated mm -hmm. and also what the outcome will be. Like, will it come back aggressively? Will it metastasize and go elsewhere? That's uh, all. And on what kind of tumor it is. Yeah. Where I live 10 years, you know, is, is one of the things that might be determined by your diagnosis. Is that right? The, yeah. Okay. That's exactly right. So I take all that information and I put it into a report and I give a final diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And in my report, it'll talk about what I saw, but at the top will be a headline that says, the uh, bone marrow or the skin showed such and such, and then the doctor acts on it appropriately. And a lot of times I tell them there's nothing bad here, but when there is something bad, I tell them exactly what it is. Okay. Now, the hematopathologist, which is what I do, specializes in disorders of the blood. There are cells that are normally circulating in, the, in your blood. There are white cells, you've probably heard of, and there are red cells. The red cells carry oxygen through hemoglobin to all of your organs, very important. In your white cells, there are a couple different flavors that we'll talk about. There are lymphocytes and granulocytes, and they are there to fight infection. So the lymphocytes and the granulocytes, they all interact together. It's one big system, and everything creates proteins that affect the other things. So if they encounter a bacteria or a virus, if you get a head cold, mm -hmm. every, everybody starts up. All these things start up. They start making proteins that activate other white cells, and then together they start fighting it. Mm -hmm. So leukemia and lymphoma are ones that are malignant. In other words, they're cancerous. Okay. And they come from lymphocytes. The lymphoma is lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about what they are, and the leukemias are from the granule sites. All right, anemia is when you have a low red blood cell count. Mm -hmm. And coagulation is the other thing I look at. When you make a scab, that is the blood clotting. And a lot of people can have disorders of that where they'll bleed too much or they'll clot too fast and they end up with problems because of that. And so that's the other thing that a hematopathologist um, specializes in. So, like someone who maybe bruises easily, they might have a one of, the, one of those bleeding disorders. Absolutely. Uh, one of the most common things if you're bleeding easily is you take aspirin or Advil. Mm -hmm. Any of those drugs actually they stop the uh, platelets. Platelets are little pieces of um, the, the, some of the blood cells that mm -hmm. start the clotting. But okay. if you take those drugs, um, particularly aspirin, if you take aspirin your platelets are knocked out for eight days. So you may easily bruise, you may um, you may bleed a little more. Like if you cut yourself, you may have to put a Band-Aid on it where normally you wouldn't have to because it stops bleeding. Mm -hmm. So for leukemia and lymphoma, they are cancers that originate in the body's white cells. And then if it's leukemia, it circulates in the peripheral blood. And not to be confusing, but a lymphoma usually causes masses, and leukemia is usually circulating in the blood. So that is acute leukemia most of the time. And that is a different disease. It's much more aggressive, depending on which one it is. And it is, uh, it can be, and not, what I'm trying not to do is confuse you, but if there's a lymphoma where those cells are running around the blood, in this bloodstream, and that's not that common, but it can happen, mm -hmm. then it's called a leukemic phase. Leukemia just means white cells move circulating in the blood. Okay. All right. It depends on where, where you notice the, the most findings. Is that right? That's exactly right. And really, if it's lymphoma and you have it in the peripheral blood, usually it's in an organ somewhere. As opposed to leukemia, where it'll center just on where the white blood cells are made. Okay. Okay. Lymphocytes. It regulates the immune system. It can also directly kill things, particularly viruses. Those are the ones that the lymphocytes are most active in. The granulocytes, they will actually attack the bacteria locally. So they go 
to where it is, and they they uh, they have a bunch of enzymes, and they spurt them out. Okay. And what happens is the white cells die because it's a toxic environment for them, but the idea is it also kills the bacteria. And if you think of a pimple that you have when you have acne, and you get a whitehead, the whitehead is a bunch of the granulocytes that are all there, and they're white. That's the color they are, white to green. That's and why they're called white cells. Is that... Well, actually, no. They were called white cells. At least this is what I understand. I could be totally wrong. But my, what I learned was when you look under the microscope, mm -hmm. without staining those cells, remember I said they're clear? Well, yeah. if, you, if you smear those out on a slide, you look at them under a microscope, the red cells are red because hemoglobin is red, just like when you look at your blood and you right. cut yourself, it's red. But there were all these balls that were clear, and so, okay. they, so they called them white cells. Okay. Like I said, maybe it's a wise tale, but that actually is uh, what I believe that's, is true. Uh, it's been a term that's been around for a while, and it certainly you know makes sense to me. So, yeah, thank you. It makes more sense than when you stain it, considering when you stain it, it uh, it doesn't look white anymore. It so, blue, okay. right? <laughs> well, it mix it mixes it up. they right. The granules can be pink. They can be purple. They can be just tiny. They can be big. So it's all over the place. So. Uh, the chemicals that those granulocytes release, what's well, called granulocytes because they have little granules in them. Those little granules contain the stuff that's going to kill the bacteria. And when it disgorges its contents, all of the stuff in there is pretty much Clorox bleach and uh, hydrogen peroxide, and there are a few other things. But as you've seen when you try to disinfect things in the house, that's what you use. Yeah. Same deal, except it's in your body. Hmm. Here's a picture of the cells when they're stained. So okay. you've got red cells, and the red cells, they're pink to red. And then the lymphocytes are on your right, and those are, they have a single round to oval nucleus. Remember, the nucleus is dark blue to purple here, okay. and that's where your DNA is. The cytoplasm is the, the stuff around it, and that's the sac I told you that holds all the proteins. Okay. On the left is the granulocyte. That nucleus starts to have funny shapes, and that's just part of the normal maturation of the cell. And if there's sort of a fuzzy haze around it. Those are all granules, and that's what contains all of the chemicals that are going to kill the bacteria. So the hydrogen peroxide might be in some of those granules? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly where it is. So lymphoma. This is a cancer of certain kinds of white cells. It's a cancer of the lymphocytes that you saw on the right side. Now, there are a whole bunch of different ones, depending on what kind of cells they are and how they mutate. There are a lot of specific DNA abnormalities that we've started to figure out cause different kinds of cancer. And one of the reasons, uh, you know, a lot of people hope for a cure for cancer. Right. The reason we can't have just one cure is we found that almost all the cancers have a different mechanism. So you've got to cure each one individually. Now, there are some similarities, like we'll have five things in uh, malignant hematology mm -hmm. that all respond to the same type of drug, and that's because they operate the same way. But not at all the case, that's not at all the case for the other 35. Okay. So cancer of lymphocytes, lymphoma, causes a mass, and the OMA means a mass. So it can circulate in the blood, like we talked about, and then it's called leukemia, but it's still a type of lymphoma. They look mature. So here, these cells on the right are mature. And you can tell that because the chromatin in, in the nucleus is dark and clumped down. Now, later, uh, I don't know if I have a picture. I hope I do. But the, I may not, actually. Okay. But the the nucleus is very immature because when we get to acute leukemia, they have a different sequence of events that causes them, and we'll talk about that. Okay. So the cells will look mature, but they don't function correctly. Now, the, the reason the stem cell is important is because the stem cell, um, once things grow up normally, mm -hmm. they have different functions because all the cells are different, and they all have the ability to change what they do in order to address all different kinds of infection. Okay. But 
if they are lymphoma or cancer, they actually all come from one cell. So when you have DNA damage, that one cell grows out of control. When I say grow, cells grow by dividing. So you have one cell that divides, it becomes mm -hmm. two. Both those cells become four. And it keeps growing until you have hundreds of thousands. And that's when you get a tumor. Those cells, since they all come from one damaged cell, they can't function the way normal ones do, both because the DNA is messed up, and that would, is what gives instructions to fight off infection, and because it's all one thing. So it can't function to attack multiple things. Mm. So what happens when you have lymphoma? You, you can't really fight infection that well. Additionally, because it's forming tumors, it will replace the normal cells. So it actually makes it so you can't make the other cells that you need. So it can make all of your blood counts go down. So it may replace the white cell, uh, the red cell. So now you don't make enough to bring the oxygen around. Or you don't make enough platelets so you can't clot blood very well. So those are the things that can happen. And all these things can also lead to organ failure, depending on where it goes in the body. Okay. Now, there are normal places where, lymph where the lymphocytes go to grow up. Those cells, when they start out, they've never seen a foreign invader. Mm -hmm. And once the foreign invader comes in, they're exposed to it, and then they go to lymph nodes or spleen or bone marrow. Now, lymph nodes are basically when, you, when people tell you you have swollen glands, yeah. Those are lymph nodes. And that is where those cells go to change into cells that will specifically attack the thing that it's encountered. So they actually are manufactured at the time that it's exposed to someone. So it's kind of like you order it online. Comes exactly <laughs> as needed. So those cells are normally in the lymph nodes, spleen, and bone marrow. And bone marrow is where you make all of your blood talk about that a bit. Um, when it goes there, that's when you start forming tumors in those areas, because it's normally there. And those are the cells where they're located that they become abnormal. Okay. Here's a lymph node. Now, this lymph node is composed of different areas. And, you know, all, what I can show you here is you've got balls here, and yeah. they're surrounded by a dark ring. And then in between, there are other cells. So in here, well, the ring around it, those are cells that have never seen the foreign invader. Like Once a virus or like, like a virus or a bacteria or? Exactly, exactly. So if you have a cold, mm -hmm. the cells in the ring outside have never seen that cold. Mm -hmm. But once part of your body sees the virus for the cold, those cells move into the center of the circle, and that's where they start developing and what you need. All right? In between, there's a different kind of cell called T cells. So the B cells are named B cells because they were discovered in an organ that's only in birds called the bursa, I think it's Fabricius or Fabricius. I think it's Fabricius. And then T cells are from your thymus, which is an organ in front of your heart. And they're developed mainly when you're young, and then over time you don't need to keep developing because they go elsewhere to live. And so your thymus starts to do, it starts to shrivel up, does what's called involution. So it starts to disappear and becomes all fatty. So here you've got a structure to it. Here is a lymphoma. And you see it has balls, right? Right. It does not have that dark rim around it, and the balls are just all over the place. So these cells that are abnormal were the center of this ring, okay? okay? And those cells are the malignant cells, and they keep reproducing over and over and over, and they keep doing what they used to do. So but they're growing too much. Is, yeah, is that, it's too much, and there's no normal structure to it. So you don't have the ring around it of cells that want to go in there and develop into something else. Instead, these are cells that are just grown out of control. They're just acting like they used to be. Remember I said that skin cells, they can look like skin when they're malignant, and it tells me it came from the skin. When I look at this, it tells me they were from the center of this, mm -hmm. and therefore it's called follicular lymphoma, a follicle's a ball. Okay. So that is follicular lymphoma. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have lymphoma, there are a whole bunch of types. 
the, and we test the cells using those special studies looking for proteins to tell what types of cells they are. We do that as well as look at the pattern, like the last one I said was follicular lymphoma. And I can tell you that just from looking at it. Some are not that easy because they don't make balls and other things like that are obvious. So there are two types of lymphoma. There's Hodgkin and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. They're different. They're both from similar cells. The majority are from B cells. And they're both B cells. The difference is that the ones that are Hodgkin lymphoma don't respond to the same drugs. So you give them different drugs to treat it. And, and early on, in fact, until the last 10, 15 years, we didn't even know for sure there were B cells because we couldn't isolate the DNA. They did some very elegant studies where they actually went in and microdissected out single cells, sucked it up with a little pipette, and analyzed the DNA, and that's how they figured it out. Wow. And that was something that they couldn't do until not that long ago. Mm -hmm. So there is a grade that tells you how aggressive the cancer is. If the cells look like what they're supposed to be, mm -hmm. that is a lower grade. Whereas if they start looking wild and really weird, that is a higher grade. Higher grade tumors are more aggressive. They grow faster, and if, not tr if they're not treated, they will cause death more quickly. At the same time, something that's kind of counterintuitive is the higher grade ones can be cured better, depending on which ones they are. They respond to treatment better. And the theory behind that is, depending on which treatment you give, mm -hmm. if you give basic poison to, say, a rat or a person, whatever, right. the more you eat, the faster you die. <laughs> OK, simple concept. Well, the cells that are higher grade, they're growing much faster than the normal stuff. So they actually will die sooner with with the poisons than will the low-grade ones that are not grown that fast. So they'll kind of eat up the poison, so to speak. Exactly. So the idea is to poison them as much as you can without hurting your normal cells any more than you have to. And that's why you have people with their hair falling out or you have people who throw up. That's all because the poisons can hurt your normal stuff. Okay. They kill your hair follicles, things like that. But it's necessary because you're really trying to target the things that are bad. So that's your side effect. OK. All right. So I, tell, I will tell the oncologist what the tumor is, what type of lymphoma, and what grade it is. And they will change their, their uh, treatment based on that. They'll also change it based on something called the stage. The stage is how many areas in your body are involved. And frequently it'll be, is it above your diaphragm, uh, mid, midway up, lungs and head, or is it on both sides? And, if it's on, and is it in the bone? Like I said, bone marrow makes blood cells. And if it's in more places, they may have to do different kinds of treatment. So a bone marrow biopsy might be helpful in some of these cases. Absolutely. It's actually necessary as part of your staging procedure. Okay. There are a few cancer, there are a few lymphomas you don't need it for, but the vast majority you will need that. Okay. This is a picture of normal bone marrow. And I say that all the blood cells grow up here. The main concept here is look at all the different cells. That's a red cell before it leaves, before the DNA leaves it. See, it's really round, um, really round and punched out. These are very young red cells. They grow up to be that. This is that crinkly looking cell in the purple blood that is the granulocyte. See how it's got a funny nucleus here? Yeah. And those cells are actually, they look more like this when they're young. And they go through, they go through stages as they grow up. They look like kidney beans. And then they start pinching off, and they become these. Okay. The other thing is, remember I said there are platelets that come from pieces of cells. Yeah. This is called a megakaryocyte. Mega because, uh, well, that's a little cell. Mega because it's really big. Normally, when a cell divides, it splits into two cells. In this case, the nucleus divides and gets really big, but it never splits off. So all of the cytoplasm, the sac around it, has mm -hmm. stuff to help make your body clot. And they stick little pieces of their cell through the wall of the vessel, and those pieces break off and become your platelets. Mm -hmm. So now the important thing here is it's a mix of all different kinds of things. Yeah. Here, here is normal. It's a mix of different kinds of things, and you have fat there. 
-hmm. Just like when you have marrow in a steak or yeah. something like that, it's all fatty. That's what this area is. That is your normal. This is bone here, all okay. right? And then this area here, looking all purple and blue, and it's very uniform, very similar to all the cells, that's lymphoma. So that is different than the rest of it, and that's what we look for. Key leukemia, what is it? Well, back to the stem cells. The stem cells grow up into the different kinds of cells, just like I showed you in the bone there. Okay. They go through different stages, just like growing up as a child. What happens with these is along the way, they stop growing up. They stop in a very young stage. Now, those cells grow very fast. They come from the bone marrow where you're making things. Now, the stuff in the bone marrow, its job is to go in the peripheral blood and circulate around. So that's why it's leukemia, because it's usually in the peripheral blood. It's acute. Uh, acute leukemia meant more rapidly aggressive. And that's how they termed it early on. So acute leukemia are these young cells. And we didn't know that for a lot of years, but we do now. Again, these cells don't look like what they will be one day. So I have to do a whole set of studies on it to figure out what it will be. And the reason it's important is, say it was going to grow up to be a lymphocyte one day, mm -hmm. and it's not better enough to be a lymphoma. That, that is one kind of chemotherapy. Where if it was going to grow up to be a granulocyte, mm -hmm. it doesn't get anywhere near that, that's a completely different kind of chemotherapy. So it doesn't grow up into a normal functioning cell, and it will push out the normal stuff. That area that was all different in the bone marrow, yeah. it, all, it all becomes packed with one thing. It's just these black. They're called blasts. Okay. okay, and you can also have them form tumors uh, in other places as well. Now, here again is the same picture, normally all different. Here is different cell types in that. And that one that you showed, there's, this is the normal. There's many cells in the body, right, in, in the moment. And this is the same picture as before. It's just a reminder. And yeah. this, this is acute leukemia. See how they're all the same? Yeah. And normal stuff is just about totally gone. Here's one granulocyte, maybe another. But wow. everything else has just totally replaced it. Now, um, if you've heard about bone marrow transplants, mm -hmm. the concept there is, um, normally, your body cannot take more than a certain amount of poison. So let's say that your cancer does not respond to the amount of poison that's safe for you to have. But the poison is the chemotherapy, right? Exactly. It's chemotherapy. Okay. So say your, your uh, cancer doesn't respond to that, or in general, that type of cancer doesn't respond. The trick here is, Certain areas in your body are more susceptible to the chemotherapy than others. Okay. Your GI tract, uh, which is why you'll throw up and maybe bleed, mm -hmm. and your skin, and also your bone marrow. Okay, mm -hmm. so you and that's because they're growing so fast all the time. Mm -hmm. So they take up more of the chemotherapy or the poison. Yeah. All right. It's essential that you have bone marrow because without bone marrow, you have more red cells, you have no ability to clot, and you have no ability to fight infection. So let's say we gave you so much poison that you have no more bone marrow. Or there's nothing in there. Yeah. Well, now the transplant is we will either take cells that we harvested from you before we gave you the chemotherapy, or we'll take it from someone else, like your brother, sister, or someone who is closely related and matches your blood. Okay. Um, there are a lot of proteins we look for for that that are different. And we can give you back that, that stuff in your arm. We don't have to go right into the marrow necessarily. And those cells will circulate, and they will, and there are some of them that will home in on the bone marrow because they know that's where they're supposed to go. And they start regrowing what normally is there. So at first, for the first week or two, you have no ability to clot. You have no ability to fight infection. So they keep the person very isolated and make sure that they can't get infected, although it can happen. And then as the bone marrow grows back, you mm -hmm. have your ability to make blood cells, platelets, and your white cells again to fight infection. There are other issues that you need to deal with to try to maintain your bone marrow at that point because there are other complications from that. But that's the concept behind transplant. Okay.
Now that's pretty interesting. I, I think that uh, they give these cells in the arm, like, like in a in a vein to, in the arm, and then they go to the bone marrow, as you were saying. Yeah. So, yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah. So that concludes the lecture for now, unless you have a uh, question or two. Well, um, I don't have any particular question. Uh, I think we have discussed several things, and I think this was a you know an excellent uh, overview of leukemia, lymphoma, stem cells, and cancer, and some and the, some of the the types of treatment, what they the effects they cause, such as hair loss, they cause you know vomiting, you know blood in the intestines, and uh, I definitely really appreciate this, Dr. Block. My pleasure. It's a pleasure speaking with you today. You as well. All right. Take care, sir. You too.